So it is now the beginning of September, so this video is actually two months late, but I am here to do my follow-up for my reader on haul for the months of January to June, or through June, as well as give you my books for July through December for this year. So I'm going to make this video really quick because I don't want to waste your time two months late, <laughs> but I had six books that I was supposed to read in the first six months of the year, and those books were The Vampire Diaries, Keeping It Real, Save the Date, Hush Hush, Broken Prince, and The Walled City. And out of these books, I read three of them. I started two of them, and I just completely disregarded one of them. So let's go over that really quickly, and then I will decide what to do with the two that I started and didn't finish, and I will also tell you the new books. So. The one that I did not touch at all, which is kind of a shame because actually like a few weeks ago now someone commented on one of my videos that this is like their favorite book by this author and I felt really bad if it was you I'm very sorry. I felt really bad saying like oh I'm probably not gonna read that book it's getting on hold. <laughs> that is Save the Date by Morgan Matson. This has been on several TBRs in the past like this book is no stranger to my channel but I just never even thought to pick it up. I think I put it on one or two TBRs between January and June and then just never even looked at it again. Like it was on the TBR and it never even got the first page opened. So this is a definite unhaul unfortunately. Again if it was you that said this was like your favorite book by this author I feel really bad but I'm just never gonna pick it up. The next book was actually a big surprise. I did not expect to like this book. I actually expected to DNF this book, but I not only ended up reading this book, I ended up reading the next one in the series. I then DNF'd the series, but I did read two books in the series. That was Hush Hush by Becca Fitzpatrick. I don't know if it was the time I picked it up or just like the mood I was in or whatever, but I usually don't like angel books. I really enjoyed my time with this. I think it was just the nostalgia factor. Like it was very reminiscent of the books that I read in the early 2000s, that like paranormal, paranormal fantasy romance kind of thing. And I just really enjoyed my time with this book. That being said, I will also be unhauling this one. I don't need to keep it on my shelves now that I've read it. Um, but I did have a good time with it when I read it. The next one that I read was I had already read half of it and so I just finish it, finished it, and again I was tempted to pick up the next book in the series but I didn't want to buy it at this point, um, but I might in the future, <laughs> and that was Broken Prince by M Emma Watt, Erin Watt, and I really enjoyed Paper Princess which was the first book in this series. This one I got to a certain point and I was just like what are we doing here? This is kind of giving me the ick, I don't want to read it. So I put it down as like a soft DNF, but I finished it and I really enjoyed it. Like I said, I kind of want to pick up the next one, um, but I'm not willing to buy it quite yet. I will be keeping this one just because I think these covers are really pretty. They're like very matte, very minimal, but there's just something about them that I really like. So I finished this and I will be keeping this one. And the last one that I actually finished was The Walled City by Ryan Grodin. I enjoyed it for what it was. It's about a walled city where it's so evil that the sun won't even touch it. It's full of gangsters and murderers and criminals and like, um, it's basically like one giant red light district <laughs> and a girl goes in there. Um, again, I read this, what, three months ago now? I'm trying to remember. A girl goes in there basically to save her sister and she runs into another guy that doesn't seem like he belongs there and it's about them. You follow them, you follow the sister as they're trying to rescue her, and I had a good time with it. It's based on the real life walled city of Kowloon in Hong Kong. There's like photographs of it, so it's not like completely ancient history, but the only thing, the only like kind of, not complaint, but a little bit of like, uh, that I had about this book, and it wasn't even that bad, um, the author is a white woman and this book is borrowing heavily from Chinese culture. So 
That might be a little weird for you. If you're weirded out by that, I wouldn't recommend picking up this book. But if that's not something that bothers you, I would give it a shot if you like, you know, YA dystopian type of books. It was good. I haven't decided if I'm unhauling this one or not. I probably will. Um, but it's not immediately going on the unhaul pile. That leaves the two books that I started and didn't finish. Um, I don't know if I'm going to count them because I did start them. So like, it's not like I didn't think about them at all, but then I didn't get very far in either of them. So I read 65 pages of The Awakening, which is the first Vampire Diaries novel. This I'm torn about, again, 65 pages is decent. I'm pretty sure I said I have to read at least 50 pages, or like that's kind of how I do it in terms of counting my books for my TBR Bakery game. Like if I read 50 pages, it counts. I don't know. This book is only 200 something pages. The first story is 253 pages. So technically I read over a quarter of the book. Um, this is a bind up of the first two books. But at the same time, if I can get this from my library, I might just unhaul the series and then if I ever want to read it, I can just read it from the library instead of, I have four of these books and they take up a decent amount of space. So I might be unhauling this. Let me know what you think. I started it, I read over a quarter of it. What do you think I should do? Should I just get rid of it? I did call this reader unhaul. The book is not read. So does that count as an unhaul? Let me know what your opinion is on this one. Again, I have four of those, so if I got rid of them, it would save a lot of shelf space, and I'm pretty sure my library has them. And then this is the one that I'm the most torn on because my library does not have it, um, and I am still interested, even though I didn't read that much of it. I only read 26 pages of it, but that was Keeping It Real by Justina Robson. Again, my library does not have this. I am still interested in it, but I've also owned it since like 2007. So am I going to read it? I might give this one one more shot. How about this? If I finish the, the six books that I have for the second half of the year, I get to pick one of these to keep. So it's like as a reward for finishing this round, I get to keep one of the books from last round because I don't unhaul that often. Like they'll go in the donation bin, but we don't actually bring the donations that often. So these very well might still be sitting around by the time we actually get around or by the, you know, the end of the year, by the time I get around to reading all these books. So if I do that, I will keep this. If I manage to read all six of these books, I will keep this one. Does that sound fair? Is that fair? I think it's fair. Um, but then I will unhaul this one because my library has these anyway <laughs> and I will save space. So that's good. Let me tell you the next six books that are on my reader unhaul for me to finish before the end of December. So I have to read these before December 31st of 2023 or they are getting off of my shelves. And let's start with the two that you have potentially already seen. If you watch my TBR bakery videos, I believe they were in either July or August's TBRs. July. I think it was July. Um, I have Almost to Die For by Tate Halloway, and I actually did already start this one. I actually got 129 pages into this. I'm already more than halfway through this one. So, you know, that's what happens when you film this video two months late. <laughs> I have already started this one. The next one is Taken by Storm by Angela Morrison. That's just a receipt. I haven't actually started this one yet. Um, I don't know much about this. It was on a TBR before. What I remember is it's like a Mormon romance, but I don't know if the author is Mormon. I assume she is, um, but I don't know for sure. So that is the second one. Number three is Don't Say a Word by Barbara, Barbara Freethy. Oh, I didn't say. This one is like a vampire witch type story. She's like half vampire, half witch. Um, this one, taken, nope, don't say a word. Julia DeMarco is planning a perfect San Francisco wedding when she comes face to face with a famous photograph. The startling image of a little girl behind the iron gate of a foreign orphanage, a girl who looks exactly like her. But Julia isn't an orphan. She wasn't adopted and she's never been out of the country. She knows who she is, or does she? 
Haunted by uncertainty, Julia sets off on a dangerous search for her true identity. Her only clues, a swan necklace and an old Russian doll. Her only ally, daring sexy photographer Alex Manning. Suddenly, nothing is as it seems. The people Julia loved and trusted become suspicious strangers. The relationships she believed in with her mother, her sister, and her fiancé are shaken by new revelations. The only person she can trust is Alex, but he has secrets of his own. Each step brings her closer to a mysterious past that began a world away, a past that still has the power to threaten her life and change her future forever. Everything she's been told about her past is a lie. Don't Say a Word by Barbara Freely. Freely. This is one of those books that's just been on my shelf. I have no idea where it came from. Um, my dad used to give me like bags of books like way back in the day. I don't know if this was one of those or if it came from somebody else. I have no idea. I know I didn't buy this, but that is one. The next one, I know where it came from. Um, a few years ago, I did an eBay mystery book box unboxing. I will, again, link the video up above if you want to watch it. Um, and this was one of the books that came in it. It is The Wolf by Lorenzo Carcaterra. Carcaterra? Um, and this one says, my name is Vincent Morelli, though most people call me the wolf. You've never met me and you're lucky you never will. And if you're lucky, you never will. I run the biggest criminal operation in the world. We're invisible, but we're everywhere. Wherever you go, whatever you do, however you spend your money, a piece of it lands in our pockets. You would think that with that kind of power, I would be invincible. But because I let my guard down, my wife and daughters were murdered, were murdered by terrorists. That was my mistake, but it was also theirs. I wasn't looking for a war, but they've left me with nothing but desire for revenge, so a war is what they'll get. International organized crime against every known terrorist group. We won't get them all, but I will get vengeance or I will die trying. They will know my name. They will feel my wrath. They will fear the wolf. <sighs> okay, so here's the thing about this book. I'm not huge into, like, crime thrillers. Um, that's kind of what this sounds like. But I got it in a fantasy and sci-fi box. So I don't know if they just saw the title and were like, oh, it's about a wolf, like a werewolf or something. I have no idea, but this is not really my type of book. So it's going on the list. It sounds slightly interesting. Like I'm, I'm, it peaks like a tiny bit of interest. So like, Maybe if I'm in the right mood for it, I'll want to read it. But also that book kind of probably would just get unhauled anyway. So I figured I would at least give it a, give it a shot. Um, the next one is another book that I've had forever. It has a receipt in it from Borders. I got it in 2005. I don't know if that's going to focus on that. But it says that I bought it 6-8-2005. Oh, with some Lindor truffle balls, <laughs> apparently. Um, and that is, if you couldn't see it on the receipt that I just showed you, um, In the Miso Soup by Ryu Murakami. It looked as though Maki had another mouth below her jaw. Oozing from this second smiling mouth was a thick, dark liquid like coal tar. Her throat had been slit literally from ear to ear and more than halfway through, so that it looked as if her head might fall right off. And yet, incredibly, Maki was still on her feet and still alive, her eyeballs swiveling wildly and her lips quivering as she wheezed foam-flecked blood from the wound in her throat. She seemed to be trying to say something. Dot, 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 dot. Um, I believe this is a horror novel. I'm not sure. I've never read from this author before, but it says another roller coaster ride from a master of the psycho thriller on the back. So I can't tell you anything about this. I figure it's pretty short. Um, and we are going into like spooky season, horror, thriller type of reading season. So I figure maybe for October, this one would be good. I don't know. We'll see what that's all about. And then the last book that I have here is, um, I believe my brother gave me this book, but he's not like a super reader, so I don't know where he got it from. But I also might have just completely made that up. I have no idea. But the last book is The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova. This is a Vlad the Impaler retelling, I believe. 
Um, so like vampire-esque. It's a chunky book. It takes up a lot of space on my shelf. So I figured that would be a good one in terms of clearing space. Yeah. This guy is over 600 pages. 642 pages. So will this one get read so that I can keep this one? I don't know, <laughs> but it's very thick, like I said. So this would be a good one if I get it off the shelf. If I don't enjoy it, for it to leave, this would save me a lot of space. So that's what I've got for you. So these are the next group of books, or this is the next group of books for my Reader Unhaul Challenge. Um, definitely let me know if you've read any of these, if I should just completely skip them, or if there are any that you think I will really enjoy and should prioritize. Like I said, I am already like two thirds of the way or halfway done with this one. So, you know, whatever. Um, let me know what you think I should do about this one, because I did read a decent way through the first story, which is all I said I had to read. Um, and then I just never got around to finishing it. So should I just get rid of these? Like I said, I'm pretty sure my library has these, so I can always read it that way. And then also let me know if you think my idea for this is good. If I finish all of these, I get to keep this one. Um, yeah, let me know if that's totally cheating, if I should just DNF or not DNF, unhaul all six of them, just get them out of my, out of my house. Um, well, five of them, because I do want to keep broken prints because I like the covers. Um, but yeah. Let me know what you think I should do about that. And these are my next six books. I'm gonna cut this video here. I don't want it to be super long for you guys. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye.